All right, we got round six of IQ qualifier number three. I'm there with Nola Gold casting uh, by my side. It was an awesome time casting on Nola's channel. So thank you for having me, Nola. Uh, for round six, we have Bratch Kata versus Zada. Uh, Bratch Kata, also known as Zeramis, a very good player. We saw uh, Bratch Kata in a lot of the PCS qualifiers. It was also uh, in a lot of the uh, the qualifying games for the Ascent of Targon previously. So, awesome player. Good to get some gameplay in uh, in round six here. And if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe because this is the sort of gameplay you're always going to get. We get good peeps. We get good people that play Legend of Terror. We get the games. We cast the games. We put them on the channel. All right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into Bratch Kata versus Zop. Bratch Kata is, is going to be playing, and I don't think we've been able to see Bratch Kata yet oh, today, nice. so pretty sweet to jump into a, otherwise known as Zeramis, for those of you who don't know. Uh, looks like playing Zada right now. All right, let's check him out. Let's get it on the screen, yeah. And just uh, Bratch Kata, so Bratch Kata, so uh, no undefeated players actually streaming right now, but two four and ones, this should be a pretty interesting game here whoever wins definitely has a much better shot of making the top cut going into day two tomorrow oh yeah we see over here uh brush Cata, tf swain looking to mole away that leviathan zap up against zada's uh i assume spider aggro that we saw earlier i think we saw that one earlier uh yeah we actually did see zada play so i'm curious to you know we have spider aggro again not a very popular deck archetype it didn't do terribly for zada earlier and zada is for so i'm curious to see how it does here uh versus brash kata yeah it has the keg which leaves a good open attack with the saboteur onto the keg but picked up the death hand last turn last round to pair with this keg could be able to take could could be able to take out this elise here Depending on how this attack goes. Not not a great open attack from Zada, I don't think. Uh, going to develop an Iron Ballista. Oh, Iron Ballista definitely helps. And uh, unfortunately, though, with this keg, it just gets blown out by this Death's Hand. Which, I mean, I guess it feels bad inside of Bratch Cat and now not being able to kill this Elise. So now kind of forcing, uh, taking that additional fearsome damage on the side of Zada. So that feels a little okay, but uh, still feels bad to lose the, the Iron Ballista. A lot more damage pushed through. Yeah, good, gonna be interesting to see what what, what the trade's gonna be. It looks like it's gonna trade with the saboteur instead of trying to eat off one of these spiders. Preparing for next turn, probably gonna see a zap. The least making these spiders could make it difficult with no twist of fate in sight. Uh, just a wider board might consider just taking the value trade on the spider here. Yeah, which this is a really tough decision because you know part of you wants to okay we're facing an aggro block the most damage right well sure but now if elise levels up you got more problems on your hand and you're just losing field uh or tempo on the field because zada's going to be able to go wider than you so it's it's yeah it, it kind of stinks but i i do like the decision by bratch kata because a leveled up elise is pretty dangerous it doesn't seem like it would be but it usually is quite dangerous nice and we see this demolitionist actually helping uh kata here with two flocks in hand Damaging yep. your own unit, uh, Kata's got to love to see it. Oh, uh, yeah, this is sweet, sweet Ravenous flock value, but does leave, uh, make it rain would be on the table. So I imagine we'll see the attacks come out first, see if there's any blocks kind of lined up. And looks like Zada is opting to block with this Saboteur, maybe playing around make it rain, maybe thinking, all right, the Saboteur is probably not going to stick around too long, so let's just offer it up and get the value while we can. Yeah. It's a good block. Good mark for death. Okay, another damage here. Wow, this is really helping these these flocks here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, right? Turned it on big. And that's probably gonna level up Swain. We saw a death's hand earlier. This is gonna be two flocks. Yep. If if not now, definitely after this make it rain. So Well, I will say Zada has Brachkata incredibly low right now. Is no way for Brachkata to heal. Oh, so yeah. this oh uh oh. Hmm. Oh man. All right. 
I think there's all right, Zada's still gonna be able to push through some damage here too. So any sort of okay top decks from Zada uh that are gonna be able to close this out, something like a Noxian Fervor, or if there's a decimate already in hand, etc. Doom Beast. Um there's a lot of options on the table for Zada to possibly just close this out after this attack. Oh wow, oh, there's all wow. that is huge. So Probably going to draw the block from the jack with the onlooker, and then this, this skitter is going to get in for the clean three, forcing the hand on the ravenous flock to take out the 2-2. Two -two. And the skitter surviving this combat is huge, too, because we'll not be able to push through with this leveled up Swain to clear this board next turn. Chat is, is going to riot because we don't have a duck. Because we don't have a what? <laughs> we don't have a duck. <laughs> from duckling. Oh, yeah. We just said we just need a permanent duck mascot now on cast. Right. <laughs> Big duck fans. Uh, nice. Well, the Swain uh, leveled up, like you said, super early because of those ravenous flocks. So it feels good, but it does not feel good to be at five health already. Ooh, this, oh, this man. hurts too. Jack the winner is uh, taking down by this Vile Feast. You gotta feel and, with a one to any one toughness unit like it's a uh, duck in the water against the uh, the make it rain the Bajwa, uh the make it rains and mm. ball feast is getting meta. Got the stun in though, so this this attack is coming through with the level oh. up Swain. Huge. Let's see if the counter push can close before Zada can top deck something like a decimate. Actually needs a unit to be able to knock him forever again. Yep. Look. Two damage. Does he there have it? Is. There's, was that top deck? That was top deck. That was the yeah. hammer axe from the top yep. deck, yeah. Bye-bye. And Zada taking game one here with this fighter aggro type deck thing <laughs> that we <laughs> have. I don't, I don't really know because, like, I don't consider it true spider aggro. Right. I mean, I guess there, there is three Precious Pet, three Arachnid Horror, and three Frenzy Skitterer, so I, and three House Spider. So that is, like, all of the spiders you can play. Yeah. I just think it's weird if there's not... Um, Jesus, I don't even remember the name of it because it hasn't been played in so long. Arachnid the, Host? Uh, the Five Drop? Or Brood Awakening? No, no, no. Uh, Brood Awakening. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brood Awakening is just, like, dead. Like, ever since it got changed back to six mana, we never see that card anymore. Catch it off a of Flash in a, in a Heimer... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, too, because uh, we didn't mention this. So, Bratch Cata, we see the TF Wayne deck here. Also running Zed Lee Sin, no big surprise there. And then as the third deck, uh, opting for uh, War Mother's Call. So, very typical lineup on the side of Bratch Cata, kind of touching on all bases uh, for the lineup. And then on the side of Zada, as we saw earlier, uh, we do have this Elise Spider Aggro deck. And then Midrange Frostbite, which is what we see here. And the deck that was banned out was the discard aggro, which seems to be one of the better performing decks right now. So I think it was pretty smart for Brash Cata to ban that out. Yeah, like you said earlier, uh, the win from, from Swim yesterday has really made this deck more popular and just really trends towards more aggro decks. It's a nice fit. It doesn't use many of the cards that Noxious... Uh, I mean, not many decks play Piltover, and the Noxious cards it does play, it allows for you to play, as you you see here, uh, Ash Sejuani. I mean, being able to pair two Noxious decks like that in the same lineup is nice. Unique to card lock. Yeah, and I really, you know, I got to agree. Today, and I'm, and I'm curious if, if anybody in chat wants to give your, your two cents. Uh, I wish we had like a survey. I always wanted to do that on, on my stream at some point. But um, if, if you guys in chat want to put if you prefer card lock or region lock, um I think I prefer card lock with you. I know you mentioned that creative decks a lot of the time. And I think that might be why we're seeing even in this tournament right before the new set comes out, we're seeing so much originality. We're seeing garroting and things like that. Like just a lot of new, uh, new deck types, even this Elise spider aggro, like where did this come from? Like I haven't seen Elise spider aggro in ages. Yeah. And it's really hard to do in a region lock format because it takes away a good amount of uh, cards, like if you wanted to do your Ash Sejuani, things like that. All right, we'll start a poll in the chat. Y'all let us know. Card lock or region lock? Put card or put region? What's your favorite format to play in tournaments oh. or to watch in tournaments? Look at you. You got the you got the poll command all set up and everything. I keep putting that off in mind. Jesus. I'm going to get on, on your level. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's another way to do it through Twitch that I need to figure out though, where it's just on the screen, like so native like, to like, Twitch. Yeah, they. It's. It, I, I don't know if it's a recent addition, but recent to me reworking my stream. <laughs> so, oh no! <laughs> nice, nice. That's awesome. So cool. See, yeah. See this flock finish off this yeti with a spider block. At 15, the flock's one of the better cards in this match. We see the Cullen Strike be able to take out that Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate, really good. Uh, was looking uh, good with Salvage and Zaft to maybe level soon, so good good that Zada cleared it out now. And Death's hand off the top here. This is an interesting matchup. I, I, you know, I think we used to see this a lot when mid-range Frostbite was like, you know, the most popular deck and the most played deck. And I don't know. I, I'm always at a loss to, as to who actually has the advantage in this match. This is another case where we talked about this earlier in the day, where if you just have the Riptide on turn eight, I think generally you're going to have the advantage on the side of uh, Bratchkata. Whereas Zada, if you have the Captain Farron on turn eight, there's a good chance you might be able to kind of aggro down uh, the TF Swain deck before the TF Swain deck can aggro you down. So it's just it's a very back and forth matchup typically in my experience with this these two decks. Yeah, I agree. It it really comes down to the way that the the players play, but then also some of the draws and the way it lines up. Zada could definitely get locked out from Leviathan Swain. Um, like you said, also Riptide Rex could have good boards as well. But if Zada comes with enough aggression and the TF Swain deck doesn't have enough flocks to really deal with these heavy, hefty 5-5 five, five units, 5-6, five, you see here Sejuani coming down, then it, it could also get run over um, before the end game can actually get in line. Yeah, and for the time being, anyways, with Zada being in control already has the Aver and Sejuani developed uh, turn five and six curving out pretty well there but Ragnar said you're going to shut down the attack turn at least for this turn so uh, again you know I, I think this is going to lead to a pretty back and forth game you know we're going to have these trades come down we're going to have Bratchkata you know have various things uh, to deal with or various options to deal with some of the aggression on the side of Zada and uh, I, I'm, I can't really give an edge to anybody in particular yet. We even see the Captain Farron on the side of Bratchkata too, because Bratchkata is playing Farron as well as uh, Riptide and Leviathan. That is a lot of just beef That's, at the uh, top end of your deck. Yeah, not a very common inclusion in Swain TF, being that you're going to automatically play uh, Leviathan, and you want some number of Rex, but... Uh... It's going to be very hefty on this board. 8-8 is going to be bigger than anything that Zada could muster. Ooh. Minus the freeze. Uh, and then so, decimates. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So he actually has 10 cards in hand now. Oh, going to burn one. So we need something to happen here to get this flock out of hand. Ooh. Would be the best possible thing. This might this might be it. We might just see the flock might use that. see the flock not to burn a card, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I don't mind the Captain Farron because I, I feel like TF Swain, ever since Jack, everybody decided universally, apparently, that Jack the Winner is just like a good card. Um, yeah. You know, ever since we've seen that included, I don't mind the Farron because it just further supports kind of that aggressive burn-like strategy that we see. And uh, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I feel like having the down before Zada was able to get one down might actually give Bratchkata enough damage. You know, Zada's already at 13. We're one off a of lethal already, and oh. we have the Death's Hand in hand too. What happened? Okay, got got the, the thing here. Okay, so develop draws, trying to catch up with this card advantage. With uh, the assessor, we're gonna see the stun on Sejuani. Has two blockers for the non-overwhelm units, so not under much pressure here. So I was probably gonna look to develop a little further. Might be a good turn to stick a Swain with with it, with no reckoning mana after this Omen Hog. So man. And I even voted card, too. So is region lock four, card lock three? I guess if you had voted card, it would have been four, four. But, um, man, I, I don't know, man. I, I just really feel like card lock is, is... Maybe it's just because we've played region lock for so damn long. <laughs> like, yeah. we're just sick of region lock at this point. I, I we want to change it up. <laughs> that might be it. Um, also, do note that these decimates, two decimates next turn plus a death's hand on the following turn is lethal from nine. But Zada does play two tavern keepers, so running all your mana out here to do some damage just could could get foiled. 
by uh tavern keeper oh i didn't even realize that that's a good generally we don't see tavern keeper all the time and oh all right there. there's so no there's tavern decimate. keeper now okay now for zada survive this death's hand on the next turn has to develop a tavern keeper right here but it's yeah. kind of hard to pass up this open attack yeah oh we'll see it. Okay. man yep that's it okay he might not even had it either but uh you know if he wow if he did that, that would be really heads up to, to lead with a uh, tavern keeper oh yeah 100 percent. and yeah brad's kind of just probably checking real quick hey nope that's saying i'm gonna go ahead and finish it out there i'd yeah. be curious to see if we had kindly tavern keeper in hand i really hope not because that was <laughs> right oh man and I can't tell you how many times we've cast a game and we like when we have both hands, especially, and we see that a card like could have won the game and it just doesn't get played. You're just staring at the card like, why aren't you playing this? Why yeah. aren't you playing this? Why aren't you playing? And then they don't play it and then they lose. And we're just like, oh, that sucks. That's not <laughs> the, the caster goggles. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it's yeah. caster goggles. It's a it's a curse and a blessing. OK, so I think. This is a matchup that, that Zada's probably happy to see. Um, with the Cullen Strikes and the Reckonings, we did see Zada win this match earlier. Or no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Reckoning. And uh, up, oh, uh, yes. The yeah. 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 Yep, 100%. Yep. It's big, yeah. So. Wow. And we'll see if that's going to be the same case here. Uh, generally speaking, I mean, from, from the looks of today, the mid-range Frostbite deck does seem to have a decent matchup into lease in and maybe that's kind of why we're seeing mid-range frostbite as much as we are today because obviously frostbite is is pretty big deal versus something like lease in as well yeah color strike specifically being a, a good card yeah to be able to take out even a lease in with a a, a, a shield on it you know barrier omen hog why does it did all right i my opponent always has an omen hog do they always like have always. two Omen Hawks? It's a, they always have it. Like, I, well, no, two Omen Hawks feels bad, but I feel like whenever I'm playing against Freljord, it's always, up oh, turn one Omen Hawk. Feels bad. You think, Especially you, when I'm playing aggro. <laughs> you, you think Zyra's going to play the 3-3 three, three Omen Hawk next? <laughs> I, don't know, I hope so now. <laughs> Jesus. Nope. All right. Average and Sentry. <laughs> <laughs> That's God, back to back to back Omen Hawks. Jesus, we're going to talk about RNG. Heart of the cards, baby. Into into what a turn five uh, eight eight hard it seems good. No, gonna go for the deep med. Get some more spells. Couple more options for this board. The board's kind of even. No, you saw no attack from Zada last turn. Here comes the Ash. That should be able to open up some attacks on the next turn. Yep. There's one spell played so far. No other option to play a second spell to try and defend this uh, attack here. Let's see if Zada's going to develop into this. And we have... Wow, okay, this is... This is a big turn for Zada, so we'll see how Brad Shkata decides to deal with this. Look like, considering the Zed, feels kind of bad. Uh, not the greatest options. I mean, we have these... We have three Eye of the Dragons on field... This turn for this attack. And looks like we're just going to possibly block with the one that we're plating and then just kind of hope, all right, maybe these three dragon links next turn are going to get us through, uh, you know, the rest of the game. Yeah, being able to pick up the dragon links on the next turn, uh, potential spell. Ooh, going with the pass. That's a very heads up pass from Zada, I think. Because this attack, unless you're doing a full on attack, is just going to get counterattacked by the dragon links mm -hmm. and healed back. So, heads up pass there. Does does get denied a, a level up on the Ash though, but the triple eye of the Dragon board is always a funny one to see because you can't really develop other units and get full effect yeah. out of all three of them. Yeah, I think we've seen Branch Cata consider playing Zed like five times now. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think every time it's probably thought it's uh hmm, if I play anything I can't get this Dragonling the sweet sweet Dragonling value which. I mean, at this point, you're at 20 already. I mean, do you really care that much about the Dragonlings attacking? I mean, it's it's close, I think. Yeah, I think just playing two spells here, maybe uh, 
try and get Zada to not attack again. Is playing into the long game. Try and pick up a Lee Sin. Has two deep meds here. Mm -hmm. We see a big Sejuani come down though. This this might get us an attack this turn. Yeah, Sejuani is pretty big here on the side of Zada. This is gonna yeah, hundred percent. This is gonna be a huge turn, and it's this Sejuani is gonna mitigate a lot. Of, uh, actually, all right now looks like prioritizing just killing this uh, this Eye of the Dragon and not even gonna allow these Dragonlings to, to block anything. Which yeah. I do like this attack by Zada. Yeah, and we saw a proactive Bastion on this eye earlier, and that just shows why this mid, mid range Frostbite deck is so good because the freezes from Icefield Archer, Sejuani, mm -hmm. they go through that spell shield. You, you're, we're going to see, unless a Deep Med pulls up a stun, we're going to see the Sejuani take down this heavily invested uh, Eye of the Dragon here. Yeah. Yeah, and which is really unfortunate. Like you said, we have Overwhelm, we have the spell invested, and really not a whole lot that Bratch Caddy could do about it. The Pale Cascade does not save it. Twin Disciples does, but God, that feels bad because you're still yeah. going to take so much damage. And you're it. spending all your mana to protect this Eye of the Dragon in the face of a potential Reckoning. Oh, oh no, it goes for the Sejuani Fury of the North to finish it off. Okay. God, he sort of really wanted that Eye of the Dragon dead, huh? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's like, I will get what I want, no matter what you do. <laughs> and here's the Lee Sin now, so maybe one spell from level up. No bash and protect it from freezes, potentially. But has a lot of spells to work with here. And with a Sejuani in play, it's going to be hard to actually challenge this Lee Sin on a following turn. Even if there's, uh, you know, there's no OTK potential on this turn. The level up will bring it to five power after the overwhelm spell, and then another two would be seven. Not gonna be able to do a full twenty Nexus strike. Yeah, unfortunately, gonna have to wait to get that Zenith Blade uh, off at some point. We could play it here and then go into a Pale Cascade, but no, it looks like Bratch Cat is gonna go ahead and pass back. We got another lease in too. This is looking better for Bratch Cata, but Zada might be able to close this out before Bratch Cata can go ahead and set up this combo. Yeah, Zada. No, Zada's not playing uh, Shunpo from earlier. <laughs> no, <laughs> just no. double checking. Always got to look out for that possibility. Oh, God. Yeah, now watch. Me and you are going to be on like. <laughs> is this card being played? Is this good? What deck is this in? A lot and of tools to protect here is the thing. Both players are going to need at least one more combat step. Uh, the Lee Sin it could could potentially uh, OTK next turn. That's something that's always going to have to worry about. But we'll see how Ka uh, Kata plays it through the potential freezes. With the Ash on board, it also opens up the possibility of Ash's Flash Freeze. Then, of yep. course, there's Harsh Winds. Uh, there's one Flash Freeze. Patrol Chant could even decrease the power just enough. You, you did see it take damage this turn. We saw that from some players earlier trying to protect the, the toughness of the Lee Sin to keep it out of that Brutal Steel range. So we see that here. Heads up. Get it out of Brutal Steel range with the Guiding Touch. And here we go. Here's that sweet Lee Sin level up. We'll see the OTK is going to be following closely behind here once the, uh, the attack token comes back on over to Brash Cata because we definitely have the tools in hand to do it. We got Pale Cascades, we got Zenith Blades, we got Denies to make sure the attack goes through. Uh, we're basically just short of Bastion to have everything we need here. Yeah, to protect from that freeze, uh, there is plus six power possibility after a freeze. Oh, again! Goes for the Reckoning, has a Deny. Still right, here we go. Has Twin Disciplines up as well to get the through this Cullen Strike. Oh. That's huge. Can, can wow. Twin Disciplines here. That's not included in all Lease Index. So no, it's it, not. That's clean. The level up brought it up to one power. That was huge. Very, very yeah. uh, specifically didn't level the... Yeah, getting it after the, the, the freeze was huge there. That was very well played by yep. uh, Kata. Yeah, playing three of the Twin Disciples. That's, that's actually... I'm this is absolutely not a card that we see in Lee Sin. Um, I actually, I do like it though, because I feel not only in really niche situations like this, 
Uh, does it help against stuff like Frostbite? But it just makes OTK your opponent that much easier, right? So yeah. pretty uh, pretty good to see here. We'll see if we do have another to go ahead and prevent this lethal, uh, this possible lethal. It looks like we no. aren't going for it. Not going in for it. Just going to take out the Ash to make sure you have a good block on the next turn without worrying about being frozen. Another cool uh, mention on that Twin Disciplines is we saw it. You brought up uh, the old, the elusive decks of old. The, the bank bank into the Z Twin Dis Disciplines curve was almost as oppressive as the, the Bastion curve with Z. So having potentially the threat yeah. of Twin Disciplines and Bastion on that bank bank in the Z aggressive yeah. draw... Uh, it's, it's pretty nasty. I like the inclusion there. Yeah, this deck is like... <laughs> basically, Bratchcato was like, I see you guys trying to do this whole Lee Sin OTK thing, and I raise you all in on the OTK. Yeah. And we're just going to buff everything's attack up to just astronomical overwhelm amounts. And Good to see. Um, so I'm glad. And this is one of the things that I've discussed a lot so far with this Lee Sin deck. It doesn't seem like... Like, let's say we all agree Zed Lee Sin is the better version, right? So this is the Lee Sin deck. It doesn't seem like anybody can agree on what spells deserve to be in this deck. <laughs> like, yeah. It's always a mix. Like, yeah, sure, we need Zenith Blade. But right. what about how many Bastion? Are we playing Twin Disciplines? Are we not? How many Denies? Are we just not playing Deny? How many, you know, like there's so yeah. many, there's so many, many different touches? changes. I, yeah, also the, uh, yeah, there's, that's the pick. I mean, some people, also the Lee Sin spell that, that has a challenge. Some people play actual copies of that in their deck and some people don't. It's, it's, yep. To configure the deck with the right spells, I think, is is the big question mark left. I, I think that the Zed version is a better version because it gives you more range, being able to play an aggressive game for sure mm -hmm. against decks that can potentially deal with the late game Lee Sin combo, can interact with it well. So those decks get eaten up underneath by the Zed, I think, or have to expend those resources early fighting the Zed through the spells. Yeah that the Lee Sin's yeah. left over with the easy kick. And you gotta, you know, I gotta think too, if Bastion wasn't buffed, is this deck bad? Like, I, I don't even think so, because Bastion still does kind of the intent, which is protecting the Zed or the Lee Sin. Um, maybe not as reliably, but I still really feel like this deck might have just been good even without Bastion being buffed, you know? Yeah, I can see it, definitely. And like we said, the... the, the Slotted some twin disciplines, maybe play a lesser number of the bastions, or say they change it. Like I, like I was talking earlier about possible changes with bastion. If they just get rid of the plus yep. one plus one, or make it just plus zero oh, plus one, or just straight proactive spell shield, but no uh, alteration to the power and toughness. Oh wow, who's that? That's lethal. Oh. So we're, this is probably going to earn a hush here on the Sejuani. I would imagine. <laughs> we we have a shadow shift. <laughs> that's that's an option. Um, yeah, it looks like we have the hush. You really want to yeah, see we'll... a shadow ship today. <laughs> <laughs> I really like, dude, this card. It's like, it's probably the card that I see most in hand as a champion spell that gets played the least, which is zero. Like, it just never gets played. Nice. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good for Bratch Kata now with uh, a lot of these trades going through and going to have this lease in to open attack with and has plenty like we have deny in hand uh we have we have plenty of ways to up this attack more we have the gems so this is this is looking pretty good for bratch cat really good backup lee sin to uh plenty of protection for the lee sin some burst spells to get the open attack if, if if that's what he wants to go for comes down on the deny here not really worried about a cullen strike with this big lee sin and wow, it, it, you know, it's cool too. He even, oh wow, and as the question, I was gonna say, wow. I like getting the messenger there because that just shows me Bratch kind of just wants to draw as much as possible to get as many answers as possible to any answers that Zana has, if that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, ends up drawing into the Bastion because of it. And here comes the freeze. Starts with the harsh winds. Is it gonna be a second harsh winds? Yeah. Oh wow, that feels bad. Well, can actually come up with what four more power, so cannot kill this turn. Let's see if he so also uses the Lee Sen to just get some extra damage in here. Uh, I don't not, know if you do that. Probably not. Um, Doesn't have any. Uh, well, you should play a single spell, maybe to shield your Lee Sen. Maybe not. You have a toughness. This is a tough one. God. 
Two harsh wins, though, from Zana. You, like, Zana knew that that was probably going to happen on a, on a particular turn, needing to play both uh, harsh wins for 12 mana there. It feels bad, but, yeah, looks like we're going to push the damage here. Yeah, push. I like pushing four. That, that'll that soften them up to where maybe you can even go wide around it. You do still have the Zed in <laughs> hand. You got the, the Goat still in hand as well. Yeah. Yeah, and you also have another Sonic Wave in hand to be able to... Which I also like. Um, something in addition to Lee Sin, I should say. And, uh, ooh, Pale Cascade, a pretty decent pickup as well. Yeah, and... I... Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I think Bratch Kata, I really think Bratch Kata is still in a good position to win this. Just slowly whittling Zada down of resources. Yeah, that's another beautiful thing that I think gets understated about the Lee Sin deck as well. You talk about the OTK, and yeah, that's flashy. You die all in one turn. But the ability of this deck to just wear your opponent down in some spots. I mean, you see yeah. a full grip. You got six cards here. Even a Captain Farron, like can get blocked up by this Lee Sin. Lee Sin would still be alive. And you got two denies for the Decimates. Uh, so, so much card advantage. With uh, deep meditation as well, and the free kills you get off of Lee Sin to just grind your opponent out in the mid game. You don't even have to do it, as we saw last turn. Just even getting in four damage with that kick. Wow, yeah, and uh, setting up these blocks. You're gonna get the trade on the Lee Sin with the barrier. Feels pretty good. Feels probably pretty comfortable taking the two damage from the Sentry. And at this point, you know Zada just with one. I don't, I mean, unless Zada has like a flash freeze randomly, which I don't know is Zada decking. One of, one of. One of flash freeze. Uh, we already saw both harsh winds played. So, and even if Zada has that, I don't know. Actually, if Zada has that. Can survive. Zada, well, Zada, I'm trying to think, all right, if Zada oh, survives, how does Zada more. win the game? Not anymore. Ooh. There's a moon glow here. We'll get, oh. get the spell shield on the Lee Sen. So yeah, there's you know, so, attack. I don't. Th there's there's no way through it. Brutal still yeah. can't target. Troll chant. It could be troll chant into flash freeze. Ah, there we go. Okay, yep. But I imagine yeah. we would have seen a troll chant on that last combat. So. Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, the surrender there. So match Kata after a long send deck. Uh, like you were mentioning, you know, people I don't think give this deck enough credit for just wearing down the opponent. That's exactly what we saw there against that mid-range Frostbite deck, which seemingly has a decent matchup into Lee Sin with all those those Frostbite effects, right? I mean, we even saw two harsh wins, um, you know, kind of blow out that Lee Sin turn, but the Lee Sin just has so much, so many ways of getting card advantage and refueling and keeping yeah. Lee Sin protected and on the board. It's just, you can't come back from it. All right, Bratch Kata doing what they do best and taking home a W there versus Zada. Again, Bratch Kata, an amazing player. Good to see a W there. Uh, and as always, everybody stay healthy, stay positive. I hope shit just works for you. Peace out.